Southpaws dominates boxing. Well, sort of. If you've been following boxing long enough, you will be aware how much of a cheat code it is to be a Southpaw. The problems they pose for orthodoxes can be the variable that has a significant impact on the outcome of a fight. In some cases, it defines a boxer completely. This was especially demonstrated in the recent Zhang vs Wilder fight, where it looked like Wilder had never seen a southpaw before. But this is Wilder we're on about, and he's not exactly known for his boxing IQ. Jokes aside, Zhang was able to accurately land his left hand at will, which effectively turned Wilder into a human Beyblade. And this X factor that southpaws possess is what allows them to catch their orthodox counterparts off guard. But before I get into why that is the case, I have to explain the difference between a southpaw and an orthodox. A southpaw stance simply refers to leading with the right side of the body, where they lead with the right leg, meaning jabs are thrown with the right hand. In contrast to this, an orthodox stance would be flipped. They lead with their left leg, so naturally jabs will be thrown with the left hand. The southpaw stance is typically adopted by left-handed fighters, whilst right-handed fighters usually take the orthodox stance. Although some right-handers have trained in southpaw, Terence Crawford being a great example of one and would often switch stances to throw his opponents off. The southpaw advantage comes from orthodoxes having to adjust change in direction and angles when throwing punches, which can be seen when both southpaws and orthodoxes are trying to establish their jab, and in many cases causes this clashing of lead hands. In addition to this, an orthodox has to be extremely careful when circling to their right, as the entire left side of their body is exposed to the southpaw's left hand. These factors are largely dictated by where a fighter places their lead foot during exchanges. The solution to gaining the upper hand is to have your lead foot be placed on the outside of the opponent's lead foot. By doing so, it's a lot easier to establish your jab from outside the opponent's lead hand, and the backhand is in firing range, but it's winning the jab contest that is so crucial in boxing and being a southpaw gives you that edge. A fantastic example of this can be seen from the undisputed heavyweight king, Alexander Usyk, who uses his southpaw stance effectively for both offense and defense. Usyk is well known for using his slick footwork and feints to swiftly place his lead foot on the outside of his opponent's lead foot and slipping inside towards his left as he throws a punch, allowing him to land a stiff jab or a straight left before moving out of range. In his first fight with Anthony Joshua, he perfectly timed the sequence of actions while countering Joshua's jab with his own jab, something Joshua had immense trouble with. Because of the problems posed when facing the southpaw, an orthodox has to adjust their style and rhythm, and by successfully doing so, they actually have all the same advantages as southpaw possesses. However, this is easier said than done as many fighters do not have the luxury of preparing against a variety of southpaw boxers. This is only natural when you consider that the majority of people are right-handed, with only 10% of people being left-handed, making southpaws a rare breed in boxing. As a result of this, southpaws have the advantage because of the simple fact they are used to competing against orthodoxes, whereas orthodoxes are far less accustomed to fighting southpaws. This is backed up by one study that examined over 2,000 boxers' records and found that southpaws had a better win ratio than orthodoxes. And the 2019 study looking into the association between left-handers and fighting success found that left-handed men are strongly overrepresented within professional combat sports, with 17% of the professional fighter sample being left-handed, despite only 10% of the general population being left-handed. And this element of unpreparedness makes it difficult for some orthodoxes to adjust to fighting against the southpaw. Southpaws frequently train with orthodoxes and are well drilled when it comes to using the change of direction and angles to their advantage. So that's pretty conclusive, right? You see, when it comes to the current pound for pound list as of June 2024, six of the top 10 boxers in the world are all southpaws which are substantial numbers, but if Southpaws truly dominate boxing, then shouldn't that number be close to 10 or even 9? 
Well, that's when you factor in other variables such as fight experience, skill, and punch resistance, which is why Canelo and Inoue rank so high up even though they are measly orthodoxes. I believe what it comes down to is the southpaw stance being a considerable advantage at novice levels and perhaps even in the amateur boxing scene, but it's how proficient you are when making the most out of the southpaw advantage that makes a difference. However, once you reach the elite levels of boxing, boxers will have acquired extensive experience fighting a variety of styles, and it's much more difficult to catch them off guard with the southpaw stance, making the southpaw advantage less effective. But what do you think? Is being a southpaw better than being an orthodox? Let me know in the comments, but that's going to be it for now. Thank you for watching.